Here I've got a problem that looks a lot like something that I would give as a homework problem in a real analysis course. And I've seen this problem in various locations, but maybe the most famous of those locations is the nice book, The Putnam and Beyond. So there's a good chapter on real analysis as it applies to problem solving and competition mathematics in that book. Okay. So our goal is to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x to the x plus 1 dx is equal to half. And immediately we can see that there's a hint built into the problem. And that hint is that the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x dx is very clearly 1 over 2n squared, just by taking the antiderivative, in other words, the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. So that means what we would like to show, so I'll just put it like this, we would like something like this to be true. For small values of x, we'd like x to the x plus 1 to look a lot like just the identity function x. So when we're integrating from 0 to 1 over n, we're only integrating over very, very small values of x. And so integrating x to the x plus 1 is essentially the same thing as integrating just the function x. And we achieve this result 1 over 2n squared. The n squared here cancels with the n squared here, and we're left with just 1 half. Okay, so how can we make this more rigorous? So let's say more carefully, we'll look at something like this. We'll look at the limit as x goes to 0 from above. We only really need to go from zero from above because look, we're only on positive x values here of x to the x is equal to one. So if we can show that, then multiplying both sides of this limit by x, we'll see that they're essentially the same thing. Again, there's some more rigor that we need to add later, but if we start with this, we're good. Okay, well, how could we show this? Well, let's notice that this is an indeterminate form of type 0 to the 0. So that generally means we need to use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. Let's set L equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from above of x to the x. So that tells us that the natural log of our limit is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from above of x to the natural log of x. Here we use the power rule to take this exponent and descend it into a multiplier. But now this is of type zero times infinity. As x approaches zero, natural log approaches negative infinity. So really it's zero times negative infinity, but that's an indeterminate form that's a little bit easier to work with. So we can rewrite this as the natural log of L equals the limit as x goes to 0 from above of, let's say, maybe the natural log of x over 1 over x. And now we have an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity, and we're good to go. We can apply L'Hopital's rule, which says to take the derivative of this top function and the bottom function, and we will achieve the same limit. The derivative of natural log of x is, of course, 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is, of course, negative 1 over x squared. So let's notice that after dividing those two things, we get the limit as x goes to 0 from above of negative x, which is just equal to 0. But that's the natural log of our limit. So that means our limit is equal to e to the 0, which is 1. So we've shown this. Okay, so now let's maybe get rid of all of this like starting calculation. We're ready to really move into the meat of the problem. And now we're ready to jump into the meat of this problem, which uses some more specialized tools from real analysis. So let's say we are given some epsilon bigger than 0. We can find a delta bigger than 0 such that if x minus 0 is less than delta, then x to the x minus 1 in absolute values is less than epsilon. 
And I should point out here that since this is a limit as x goes to zero from above, we interpret this x minus zero absolute value less than epsilon as x is between zero and delta. But now we can take this inequality and multiply all parts of it by x. So that's going to give us the absolute value of x to the x plus 1 minus x is less than epsilon times x. And just to reiterate, that's for x between 0 and delta. But we would like this to be true for the x values that we're interested in. And those are the x values between 0 and 1 over n. But since we're taking this limit as n goes to infinity, we will eventually achieve those x values. So now let's note if n is bigger than 1 over delta, then 1 over n is less than delta. So that just follows from standard inequalities. And we have the following inequality. So the absolute value of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x to the x plus 1 minus x dx is less than the absolute value of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of epsilon x dx using this inequality. But now that's an easy integrable function. Well, in that we know the antiderivative, I guess I should say. And that will give us n squared times epsilon x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1 over n. But let's notice that that's exactly equal to epsilon over 2. So what have we done? We've made this object right here as small as we want. It's less than this number epsilon over 2. But since epsilon was chosen to be arbitrarily small, that means this thing is also arbitrarily small which means its limit equals zero. So in other words, as n goes to infinity here, this limit is equal to zero. So that's the summary of what we've just done here. We've shown that this thing right here tends to zero as n tends towards infinity. Okay, so now let's bring that fact to the top and we're ready to finish it off. So far, we've achieved the following fact. So the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x to the x plus 1 minus x equals 0. I'm able to remove those absolute values because it's pretty easy to show that, the, that if the absolute value of something tends to 0, then that something also tends to 0. Okay. So now we're going to start with our goal limit and then manipulate it until we have this right form here. So let's take this limit as n goes to infinity of n squared, the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x to the x plus 1 dx. And we'll copy it over. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x to the x plus 1 dx. And then we'll add a copy of 0. So what copy of 0 will we add? Well, we will add plus and minus n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x dx. So I'm going to add it. So that'll be the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared, the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x dx. And then I'll subtract it. So minus the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x dx. But now I'll put these two together that I'm underlining in purple. And that will achieve this limit that we just showed on the other board. So that'll give us, so that'll give us the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x to the x plus 1 minus x dx, and then plus the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 over n of x dx. So we just showed that this tended towards zero. Then we can tackle this limit. So taking the antiderivative, we'll be left with the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared. 
and then x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1 over n, but that will give us the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared times 1 over 2 n squared. But then we see that the n squared in the numerator cancels with the n squared in the denominator, and we're left with exactly what we want, which is 1 half. And that's exactly what we wanted to show, and that's a good place to stop.